Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from UnboxGraphics.com and in this video tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how to extrude shapes in After Effects. So extruded shapes can be used for all different types of things. It's pretty versatile. Um, but what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be kind of duplicating this guy, his name's Eddie on Dribble. Um, he made this like flip flop animation. We're just gonna be replicating that flipping O. So um, let's just go ahead and jump right into After Effects and get started. So you can see here that I created a new composition. I named it Extruding Shapes, um, 1600 by 1200, 50 frames a second, pretty standard. But if you go to 3D Renderer here, you'll see that this is set to Classic 3D. If you open that up and you select Cinema 4D, it enables uh, a bunch of different things, but it also disables a bunch of things. So we'll just go through those. So it enables extru extrusion, which means you can make extruded shapes, um, reflections, curved footage layers, um, it offers a lot of versatility. Um, however, it does disable a lot of things such as track mats, blending modes, layer styles, masks, certain masks, um, depth of field, and a bunch of other things. So um, just an FYI, things like motion blur just will not work with this. So I'm gonna start by creating a new background layer, layer new solid, and I'm gonna make it black for reasons that you'll know kind of uh, maybe a little bit later, but I'm just gonna lock that layer. So first things first, I'm just going to create a ellipse. So I'm just gonna come down to the ellipse tool and holding shift, I'm just gonna create a perfect ellipse. If I press Y on the keyboard, I could center the anchor point. And then V on the keyboard allows me to then move it over to the center of the composition. So um, because I want this to be a kind of an O and not a, like just a, I guess a full circle, I'm gonna turn the fill off and I'm going to increase the stroke diameter. So now it looks something like that. Um, and I can actually just scale this down by pressing S on the keyboard and I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit. Um, and now I'm going to make it a 3D layer. So you notice as soon as I made it a 3D layer, we got these two new things open here, geometry options and material options. I'm not really gonna mess with material options too much, but if you open up geometry options, you can see here that you could change the extrusion depth. Let me just turn my music down. So um, basically I'll show you what that does. If I go layer new, um, actually I don't need to create a camera. I could just hit R on the keyboard and rotate this and you can see what I mean. So you can see that it's been extruded a little bit. Now it's hard to see the details because there's no shadows, but let me show you what happens when I increase the extrusion depth. You can see here that it gets more extruded. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm just gonna change it to maybe a depth of maybe 120. I think that looks good. And I'm gonna set the X rotation to zero, but I'm gonna change the Z direction to 90. Um, I'm sorry, not the Z direction, the Y direction to 90. And you can see here that it's not quite centered up in my composition. If I turn the grids on, you could see um, this needs to be moved over because basically it extrudes just from um, just deep. It doesn't extrude. Um, it doesn't extrude uh, from the center point. Let me see if there's an option to do that. Um, I don't see an option to extrude from the center, um, but it's pretty simple. You just move move it over until it looks like it's about in the center. You press Y on the keyboard, and you just simply move that anchor point over. So from here now, when I rotate this, it'll rotate about its actual center. So now we can start doing some pretty cool things like add a layer new light. And I think a spotlight is fine. Um, I'm just gonna grab the Z direction and drag it out so it's a little bit out of my way. And uh, I can lock that layer. Um, so now in the material options, <clears throat> You could start maybe adjusting some things to see kind of what fits, fits your purpose. Um, but really in the light spot settings is when you're really gonna be able to get a lot of, um, a lot better granular control. So I like to increase the intensity. So that way the white areas are like really white. So really you're only getting shading kind of real deep there as well as some on the sides. And you wanna leave that to none. And now I'm just gonna kind of mess with a few of these settings. Uh, most of them really won't do a whole lot um, in this setup, in this light setup, but I'm just gonna mess with them until I get something that I think looks good. Um, let's see. 
So I can even just grab this light. And maybe bring it a little bit closer. Just get a little bit more shadows. But I still want the intensity to be pretty high. So that way I definitely get white there. Okay, so I think that looks about right. And now you'll see that we could start rotating this thing. Press R on the keyboard. I'm just gonna reset all of these to zero. And now we can start doing some pretty cool things. If I set stopwatches. So I want maybe this to rotate um, 180. Rotate this way, maybe 180. And then this way, negative 180. And we'll kind of see what we get. So it doesn't really look that interesting, um, but maybe set this to negative 90. See what we get. And this is just kind of just messing around with the different settings. Okay, so that looks okay, but let's make this a little bit more interesting. Um, if you just go into Google and you type in um, bounce, uh, After Effects Expressions. You'll come upon a link from Gray Machine. And they have this really great expression. I'll link this down in the description. But if you just copy this, you can actually add it to these rotational effects and it will give you some cool um, bouncing effects. So these are expressions and the way you activate that is that if you hold Alt and you press on the stopwatches, you get this little expression area here which you can hit Control V and just paste the code in. Now, when you do that, you're actually gonna to wanna to make sure, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these, these points are, are a little bit closer to one another because that's how fast the, the effect will take place. And the faster it occurs, the more kind of interesting bounce you get. Um, so that looks really cool and natural. Um, and in this setting here, if you change the amplitude, the frequency and the decay, that changes the settings a little bit. So, okay, so that looks kind of interesting. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, I'm just gonna change this one more time. I'm gonna set some more keyframes and I'm going to make this negative 180, 360, and 360. Let's see what we get now. So that looks pretty interesting. And I think it stops moving about at six seconds. So I'm just gonna hit N on the keyboard. So this will be my full animation. So I think I could just move this over. I think it's happening pretty quickly. Maybe just bring this out to six and a half seconds. But here's something pretty cool that you could do. If you select all of these layers and you pre-compose them, control shift C, um, pre-comp layer one, that looks fine. And I create two new layers, layer new solid. And I think I want this one to be white. Hit okay. And then I go layer new solid and I make this one the background color I want. Hit okay. Um, I'm gonna use this pre-comp as a luma mat. So basically wherever it's black, I'll get my red color and wherever it's white, I'll get white. Um, the reason being is that on this white layer, if I go luma mat, invert luma mat, um, the black piece of the image actually cuts away this white background, this, this white solid. But wherever it's white, it maintains this, this white layer. Um, so gradients will actually look gradient red. It'll look like a red. So you could see kind of right there how it looks kind of red there instead of uh, instead of gray. So that allows you to add a nice cool background to it. And so I think that looks pretty interesting. I'm just gonna render this out in full. 
And I think that's basically it. I would maybe try to kind of adjust the color settings so that way it doesn't absolutely blow out um, in terms of white and black. So you can see that it's totally black. That's why the red's coming through. But overall, I think that that looks pretty good and you could just adjust the light settings to your heart's desire. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, check out other videos on this channel, as well as checking out our Discord and our Patreon account. We have some certain Patreon rewards um, for Discord. So if you become a Patreon follower, you can download all of our project files as well as um, you will gain certain accesses to the to the Discord channel. But if, you, if you're not a Patreon subscriber and you'd just like to join our Discord channel, the link will be down in the description and you can come hang out. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.